Welcome to the Def Cam. Viewers, please encourage us by subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to our topic. Pakistan's aviation community entered the Dubai Air Show with a quiet confidence that came from years of engineering progress, operational discipline, and consistent investment in technologies that lifted the JF-17 Thunder program from a modest light fighter into a versatile combat system with genuine reach and maturity. When the JF-17 Thunder Block III appeared on the ramp, the aircraft carried a presence that came not from showmanship, but from the clarity of its design. The airframe displayed a clean surface finish. The canopy shimmered with the golden tint that protected the pilot from electromagnetic emissions, and the nose cone housed a sensor suite that pushed the aircraft far beyond the early models that once formed the baseline of the fleet. The aircraft rested with the confidence of a machine that had been shaped by continuous frontline use, real lessons from diverse operations, and a technical culture that valued incremental improvements supported by data. The display team arranged the complete weapons set beneath the aircraft so visitors could study the choices that defined Pakistan's approach to modern air combat. The long-range air-to-air missile with an active seeker named PL-15E lay under the wingtip station. The missile represented a shift in how smaller air forces sought to contest the airspace against larger powers. The missile's propulsion and seeker combination created an engagement envelope that usually belonged to far heavier aircraft. For Pakistan, the presence of this missile on a light fighter showed a philosophy built around reach without dependence on massive airframes. It illustrated how a well-integrated sensor suite, precise algorithms, and a stable power supply could allow a compact aircraft to use a weapon of considerable range with reliability. Beside the air-to-air -air missile rested the CM-400 AKG, whose shape and mass indicated a purpose that was entirely different. It was built to hit high-value maritime targets from a distance that kept the launch aircraft far from the hostile radar horizon. The missile combined a high-speed trajectory with guidance that allowed terminal precision against moving targets. The presence of this missile on the display indicated how Pakistan viewed its coastal security environment where naval movements contested waters, and potential blockade attempts required options that did not rely on large fleets or heavy strike aircraft. The combination of these two systems on a single fighter platform highlighted how the JF-17 Thunder Block III was meant to give commanders choices without burdening the fleet with oversized maintenance demands. Near the weapon stands, visitors examined the Indigenous Range Extension Kit. It converted free-fall munitions such as MK-82 and MK-83 general-purpose bombs into standoff weapons. The extension kit merged a gliding mechanism, a mid-course guidance solution, and a precision terminal capability that allowed the pilot to release the bomb from a safe altitude and distance while still achieving accuracy. The confidence in this system came from Pakistan's long experience with precision strike missions where terrain, weather and hostile air defenses demanded options that reduced pilot exposure. The kit allowed the airframe to carry a simple bomb and transform it into a long-range strike tool without developing a new guided weapon from scratch. The result was a system that offered cost efficiency, manageable integration demands, and high performance. The JF-17 Thunder Block III at the airshow represented the culmination of years of work to refine avionics, improve sensor fusion, stabilize the flight control logic, and build a digital backbone capable of hosting future systems. Engineers treated the aircraft not as a finished product, but as a platform that could evolve. For this reason, the presence of the aircraft at the airshow did not feel like a marketing push. It felt like a technical demonstration of where Pakistan's design teams were heading. Pilots interacting with visitors spoke about workload reduction, reliable displays, improved radar sensitivity and software that allowed smoother interpretation of data rather than overloading the pilot with raw information. The contrast with the Indian presence at the same event became visible in a moment that none of their organizers intended. The Tejas fighter stood on static display without any weapons package. Its surface lacked the aerodynamic loadout that visitors normally expected from a combat aircraft at an international event. More concerning for observers was the sight of fluid leaking beneath the aircraft. A fighter presented as the pride of a growing aerospace program should not reveal maintenance faults on the tarmac, especially when supervised by the most experienced crew sent abroad to represent the country. 
Yet the crew attempted to conceal the leak by placing shopping bags under the aircraft, a gesture that raised questions about the confidence and technical readiness of the team. In aviation circles, what a country presents at a major event is often regarded as the best it can offer. Every participant brings aircraft that have been inspected, polished, and tested before the show. These aircraft reflect not only engineering, but also culture. When a fighter leaks in front of international observers, the issue is not limited to a single seal or valve. It draws attention to maintenance discipline, pre-flight checks, training quality, and the seriousness with which the aircraft is prepared. The absence of weapons on the Indian fighter added another layer to that impression. It suggested either incomplete integration, concerns about structural loads, or hesitation about presenting systems that may not yet meet the standards expected by foreign delegations. Pakistan's delegation did not need to comment on this situation. The contrast spoke for itself. The JF-17 Thunder Block III stood complete with air-to-air -air and air-to-surface loadouts, advanced missiles, precision kits, and a technical narrative that connected each system to operational requirements. It stood like a machine that belonged in an active theater. The Indian fighter stood like a prototype that required further refinement. Observers from different countries noticed this difference without prompting. For Pakistan, the moment reinforced a deeper truth. A successful aviation program does not emerge from slogans. It emerges from disciplined engineering, integration work carried out in small steps, pilot feedback loops, careful management of supply chains, and the willingness to admit faults early in development. The JF-17 Thunder program grew through this very process. When earlier models faced aerodynamic and electronic issues, the teams responsible did not hide them. They fixed them through structural strengthening, updated radar software, better cooling solutions, and improved power management. The Block 3 reflected all those lessons. Pakistan understands that air power is not a platform alone. It is the sum of sensors, crew competence, maintenance cycles, logistics pathways, weapon integration, and the ability to upgrade without redesigning the entire aircraft. The Block 3 demonstrates that philosophy every time it takes the ramp. Its presence at the Dubai Air Show showed a country that had taken ownership of its defense technology pathway. But the Indian display showed a country still struggling to align ambition with capability. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos.